Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending today's session. First of all, I would like to say thank you to Lena for being a part of the Smart Star Conference. We thank you so much for your support of the Smart Star Conference and your continued support of the young children and families in North Carolina. Thank you for having this session today as part of your conference benefit package. And so today we have for you, Lena, and the session is Measurable Talk, Immeasurable Benefits, Improving Teacher-Child Interactions in Early Childhood Education. And I will let them introduce themselves to you. Enjoy the session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jessica and Yvonne. Um, and we appreciate the partnerships with NCPC and all of um, our Smart Start partnerships across the state of North Carolina. I'll start by introducing myself. I see some familiar names, so it's nice to see people again. My name is Jody Whiteman, and I am the Director of Partnerships and Growth at LENA. Um, I live in Wake Forest, North Carolina, so I am very passionate about um, providing high quality um, programs and services to young children and families in the state I live in and, and supporting the communities in which they live in. And I'll pass it to my good friend and colleague, Liz. Hi, everybody. My name is Liz Pettit, and I am a product manager here at Lena. So working on improving our Lena Grow program for teachers to make it the best experience possible. Uh, I'm really excited to join you all today. We're actually in um, Boulder, Colorado at our main Lena office, uh, but I am based in Richmond, Virginia. So just a hop, skip and a jump away from y'all in North Carolina and I actually have a niece and nephew both in um, early care settings in North Carolina. So really appreciate the work you all do down there, uh, especially in Hope County. Shout out to Rayford. Um, <laughs> and we're looking forward to talking with you all today. Um, we are going to primarily be using the chat function for um, you know, we'd love for you to just put your name and where you're from in the chat. And we want to make this interactive, um, so also um, welcome you to unmute um, and share verbally as well as we kind of go through. I'll start with just kind of um, the why um, behind the importance of early talk and a little bit of our research, and um, then we'll pass it on to kind of dive into kind of the strategies. So um, prior to starting, we were just curious, and maybe um, there's a little reaction button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Just curious as to um, how many of you attended um, the session at the Smart Start Conference. And if you could maybe just use your thumbs up if you did attend the session, um, that would be really great. Wonderful. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we know that there were many, for those of you that did attend the conference, that there are lots of sessions simultaneously happening at the same time. And so that's why we are so grateful for this opportunity to also connect with you if you were interested in the session, but um, decided to go to a different one as well, or if you just weren't able to make the conference. So um, let's go to the next slide. So before I go into um, just kind of highlighting some key bullets on the slide, um, for those of you that don't know about LENA, LENA stands for Language Environment Analysis. Um, and it is a device that we refer to as a talk pedometer. And we'll share a little bit more or a Fitbit for words if you want to think about that. Um, we're a national nonprofit. Um, as Liz mentioned, when we started, we're based out of the Boulder Colorado area, and our mission is to transform children's futures through early tech technology and data-driven programs. And so we do that across the country through a variety of different programs. One program we have is our SP program, which is mainly used in research and therapeutic intervention settings. The program we're going to focus on today is our Lena Grow program, and that's embedded into center-based and family child care homes. And then we have our Lena Start program, which is our family facing program that um, is wherever kind of families are gathered together, um, kind of diving into using the data 
from the Lena device to um, think about what that means in terms of adult-child interactions. And then we have a Lena home program, which is embedded in home visiting programs like parents as teachers or nurse family partnership. So why early talk? As I mentioned, I'm going to start kind of with the why. Well, I don't have to convince you all because I know that you're all very passionate about supporting early childhood development in the counties that you're working with. Um, but really, we do know, and not just early talk, but this idea of this interactive piece of it, so that really back and forth, we know that it increases school readiness. And you'll hear us kind of switching between the... the um, words of conversational turns and interactive talk. And it's really that conversational turns, that back and forth, that helps um, improve all these bullets that you see on the slide. And we'll dive into a little bit more details about research. So many of you also have probably seen this slide in, um, in your trainings or um, you know throughout your, your readings, or if you've you know, gone on to Harvard developing child, but we do know that a baby's brain grows the most during the first three years of life. And we know that there's millions of neural connections per second. So this slide actually shows the proliferation of neurons over the first two years of life. And it's just, every time I look at this, I'm just, it's just amazing. Um, we also know that those neural synapses that are used are strengthened and can strengthen the brain's architecture. And those that are not um, are pruned in a process called synaptic pruning. So you may have also kind of heard this term, use it or lose it. And so that's the idea of thinking about how we as adults can really help kind of create this really high quality, strong brain architecture that can really lead to us to see these um, expansion of these proliferation of neurons. And one thing you may have known or not known is that um, a baby's brain actually processes speech at one fifth the uh, speed of adults. So when we think about that, it's really, really important that that piece of information allows us to think about, wow, we really need to kind of slow down. We really need to be intentional about our interactions. We need to leave some time for that serve and return, for that interaction to occur, to respond to the fact that uh, baby's brains process speech at one fifth the speed of adults. Next slide, please. So um, as I mentioned, we have this idea of conversational turns and um, you can use this QR, uh, QR code if you're interested in um, looking at any of the additional research, but I kind of liken this to an analogy of a ping pong game. So the ball is served up by one of the players and returned. And the idea is to keep kind of this going back and forth, right? I mean, it doesn't look like this in my ping pong game because I'm a terrible ping pong player, but the idea is to keep the ping pong game going back and forth. And so we're gonna um, look at kind of a, a real life example that many of you have probably seen, but I think it just is a, a really great example of what a conversational turn looks like. Okay. They need to work on that, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Did you understand it though? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, no. Not, not this one. This is, this is the grand finale of this. Okay, the last one? Yeah, that's the last one. You want to That's what I was wondering. I don't know what they're going to do next season because they did some stuff this time. Exactly what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Don't bring that again. You know what I'm saying? Don't do the same stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. Like go somewhere else with that, but don't break it here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I said. And then it was like, ah, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, what in the world? But don't do that here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really? I thought the same thing. <laughs> we think a lot alike, huh? <laughs> That's crazy. Right. 
so one of my favorite videos of all times. Um, as you saw that, what were some things that kind of came to your mind in terms of that back and forth interaction? You can unmute or you can go ahead and type it in the chat, whatever you're more comfortable with. Acknowledging the child's words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you saw that kind of wait time. Thanks, Carolyn. Thanks, Susan. Bonding. Yeah, thanks, Christina. Waiting for the child to speak first, then responding. So you could really see that little boy, he felt like he was heard, right? He was really part of that relationship. That was some really great quality back and forth. And so when we think about a conversational turn, there was a lot of conversational turns that we saw in that example. And so um, we just wanted to kind of po point out because some we get a lot of questions um, in terms of what, what is a conversational turn? So we looked at that ping pong analogy, but really when we think about it in terms of an adult child serve and return, it's a key child or adult. It can start with either one, serves up a interaction. It could be a, you know, a babble or a, you know, a response to a coup as an infant. It could be a word exchange. It could be a sentence exchange. And then that adult or child responds. And then you can see it still counts as one turn when we have the key child, adult, key child, and then moves into kind of that two turns as we um, have that kind of full circle um, close out of the key child, adult, key child, and adult. Thanks. Next slide. So um, we have a lot of research now. Thank goodness. Again, I don't have to convince you all, I feel like, um, in terms of the importance of serve and return, but we actually have a lot of research that confirms the power of conversational turns. And so I just wanted to highlight um, a few. And for those of you that are like totally into um, diving deeper into any of these papers or research, um, we have links to these in our website under um, the resource section, and we can put a link in the chat to that. But the first one I wanted to point out was in 2018, Dr. Rachel Romeo and a team of researchers from Harvard and MIT published two papers. So you can see on the slides, it's 2018A and 2018B. That 2018A looked at the relationship between conversational turns and the Broca's area of the brain, which we know is actually the language center processing area of the brain. And so they saw that there was this great correlation between conversational turns. And I'm gonna dive a tiny bit um, deeper into this one for a second, just because what they found was that they actually saw in um, functional MRIs that the Broca's areas lit up as there was an increase of conversational turns. So if you, for example, saw a child that had 1,200 conversational turns versus a child that had 500 conversational turns for the day, you would actually see an increase in the brain activity in that language processing center. The second um, uh, research um, from Romeo to 2018B looked at um, the correlation between conversational turns and the white matter of the brain. And so what they saw was actually the increase in conversational turns strengthened the white matter in the brain. And the, the really great thing that's important about this is the white matter of the brain is also kind of referred to as the informational highway. So basically it allows the neurons to kind of rapidly um, increase the way that they're firing across all areas of the brain. So not just that Broca's area of the brain. So that's really telling us that it helps the brain work together and kind of address all areas of development. In fall, the next one I'm gonna to go to is in fall 2018, a 10 year longitudinal study was published by Lena's lead researcher, Dr. Jill Gilkerson. 
and a team of researchers that she worked with. And um, this explored how conversational turns in the earliest years of a child's life related to uh, long-term outcomes. And what the study found was that there was a very strong correlation between the amount of conversational turns a child experienced in 18 to 24 months of age and their, child, their verbal abilities, language skills, IQ in middle school. And so we're actually kind of still trying to follow these uh, kiddos um, and they are graduating from high school. So hopefully this next year we'll be able to kind of track high school graduation rates. The next one I wanted to um, talk about was by Dr. Emily Mertz and a team of researchers from Teachers College at Columbia University. And what they found was the relationship between a child's socioeconomic background, a child's brain structure and reading skills. So this study found that children who experienced more conversational turns had a greater surface area on the left Perry Sullivan cortex. And what that actually means is that the left Perry Sullivan cortex is, is directly connected to reading skills. So those early language and literacy skills as well. And so while the adult words and conversational turns both affected brain growth, the effect size was actually 15% higher for conversational turns, confirming that really the quality is more important than the quantity when talking to children. And actually we have this um, phrase at Lena that we say, we say words are good, but turns are better. So let's go to the bottom of the slide and look at another paper by Rachel Romeo. And again, she used functional MRI imaging um, paired with Lena technology. And I should have said, um, when I started, these were all tracking with the Lena technology in terms of the conversational turns. And what she did this time is she mapped out another important change of connections, linking family-based interventions like those home-based interventions, parents as teachers, early intervention, nurse parent family partnership with adult child conversational turns, brain growth, executive functioning, and language and reasoning assessments. So a direct correlation there. And then this one I'm very excited to share about um, is was published in 2021, and it came from researchers working in Santiago, Chile at Pontifica University, and that included Dr. Esteban Gomez Muzio and Dr. Catherine Strazer. And what's really, really important about this study is they found this causal link between the interactions at 18 months of age and social emotional skills at 30 months of age. And essentially, the number of conversational turns a child experienced at 18 months of age predicted their emotional regulation, attachment, and emotional communication one year later. And so I know those of you that I've met through my infant and early childhood mental health worlds here in North Carolina knows my passion about um, social and emotional development. So we're really seeing from all these research studies is that the, the idea of the conversational turns, those back and forth fourth are really impacting overall child development. Thank you. Next slide. Okie dokie. So what I wanted to kind of just point out here before I pass it over to Liz is that one of the things we wanted to know, we have a large data set with our Lena Grow program across the country. And we wanted to look at that data set and think about how much interaction do children get in different settings. And what we found was there's a large disp disparity um, in language environments of children in, experienced in childcare. So those children that are in childcare, and this may not be surprising to you, but we actually have um, the data to kind of think about what it looks like. And so what we found is 20% of children that are in childcare are actually sitting in language isolation. And what that is is five conversational turns or less per hour. And actually, the average um, hourly interactions in center-based childcare is about 15 turns per hour, and then about more than two-thirds of children are experiencing fewer than those 15 turns per hour. And that family child care, it's looking like that's a little bit higher at 25 turns per hour. And if you think about that, you know, we know kind of ratios may be a little bit lower in those family child care homes, allowing for kind of more on one-on-one -on -one, um, interactions. And that we have this optimal early talk environment at 40 conversational turns per hour. And only 6% of children experience this 40 conversational turns per hour. 
So oftentimes we're asked at Lena, what is the optimal talk um, environment? And we are referring to the optimal talk environment is at that 40 conversational turns. And where we got that was from that research study that I quickly went over from Dr. Gilkerson, that longitudinal study that looked at when children experienced 40 conversational turns at 18 to 24 months old, we, when we followed them through middle school, that's when we saw the statistically significant increase in those other um, assessment measures that were conducted um, with those children. So that's our optimal talk environment. But just to kind of refer you back, what we're seeing is that average in childcare is about 15 turns per hour. And so we're not, it's not always about let's just get to the 40. Of course, that's optimal, but that it's about how can you increase each time you intentionally focus on goals related to your adult child interactions. And so Liz is going to um, share a little bit more about how this data allowed us to inform um, kind of our creation of our Lena Grow program and how this is uh, happening across the country and with some of our partners in North Carolina. Awesome. Thank you, Jody. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about Hi, Liz. Um, I, we are unable to hear you. Your audio, it doesn't say you're muted, but I believe your audio of me is, it, I thought it was my computer, but it looks like it might be everyone's. <laughs> it's like, wait, okay, okay. And now can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. We okay, can. awesome. Yes. Great. All right. Okay. Um, we're sharing our audio in one room, so <laughs> we got, <laughs> wanted to make sure I'm close to the mic. Um, okay, I will start over. Sorry about that, you all. Um, so <laughs> thanks for putting it in the chat too. Um, all right. So the, the, what I was saying is that, um, we're going to go a little bit into kind of how Lena collects this data and provides it back to teachers to change their practice. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to take a look at some videos of real life, um, interactions in a childcare setting. And we'll talk a little bit about how, some of the materials that we provide in this program help teachers change their practice to increase conversational turns. So bear with me while I talk through some of these logistics and what the program looks like, and then we'll get into um, really looking at hands-on how it works. So at the beginning of a day, um, teachers turn on the Lena device and put it inside of a, a pocket on a Lena vest, and then they put the vest on the child. So they'll do that for each child as they arrive. Um, and then that device captures the audio environment for that specific child all day long. Um, teachers just go about their day as usual um, and they don't have to do anything else with the device or the technology after that. Uh, the device is then taken off the child when they leave for the day and hooked up to a computer which processes the audio. Um, this will work no matter what languages are being spoken. Um, because the Lena algorithm takes that audio data and turns it into reports, deleting the recording. It's not really about what the teachers and children are saying. It's just about how frequently that interaction is happening. So it's counting that um, as it processes the data and deletes the recording. This is really important for teacher buy-in, I think, because teachers don't want to feel monitored, right? They want data that is meaningful to them without having that sort of feeling of oversight. Um, and so making sure that teachers know this as they begin the program really builds their confidence that this is a tool to help them, not to monitor them. 
Um, and so once you've processed that data, um, a report is generated that you then give back to the teacher. It's really timely, which is huge. I know a lot of times when we look at um, other sort of classroom level assessments and observations, it can be hard to get that data right back to the teacher quickly um, so that they can reflect on that day while they still remember exactly what happened on that day. Um, and so that's really important to us is that the data is quickly given to the teacher and they can reflect on the actual events of that day in the context of the data. Um, and so these reports are sort of formed the basis of our Lena Girl program, which is a five week professional development program. Um, I'm gonna play a little video that definitely better explains how this works than I can now that you have that primer. Um, let me know as it's playing if anyone has any issues hearing or seeing. A cup? What's this? Yeah. Oh, and there's some uh, steak. Say steak. Conversational turns, mm -hmm. they also went up. Really? And you're in that band now that there, which is where we want everybody to be. Okay. And your highest was again 9 a.m., like we said, breakfast. Mm -hmm. And your clear speech increased, it went up to 17%. Look at that. All right, so that's a good overview of kind of what it looks like to experience the Lena Grove program. Um, and you might have noticed in there, uh, it mentioned the 14 talking tips, which are the core of Lena's um, professional development curriculum for teachers. And we're going to actually use those in a few minutes as we look at some videos and kind of apply them. Um, so you'll get a sense of what it's like to coach with the Lena Grove curriculum with teachers. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to do a quick overview of what that video just described. Um, so again, there's a Lena Day where the data is collected. We get the feedback from that Lena Day recording in the form of reports, and then a coaching session happens. And in that coaching session, we really think carefully about a strengths-based approach to interpreting this data. So we know that data can be overwhelming in some cases. And so the Lena Grow program is built specifically to support coaches in walking teachers through that data in a strengths-based way. Um, so for example, you might notice that the 11 o'clock hour is much higher than all the other hours. And so you might talk about what exactly is going on in the classroom at that time. How can we extend those strategies that are working really well to other hours of the day? Um, and then as you go through that cycle, you do that five times for five weeks. Um, and the teacher gets a new report after that coaching session, after setting goals, and can see their progress over time. And so we see as a result of that data and that coaching, 
um, increased interaction in the classroom, and we know that that increased interaction in turn leads to kindergarten readiness for these children. Um, so here is a the report that teachers receive each week um, after their Lena day and that you would review during the coaching session. Um, and so there are uh, stars earned on each report. This is a motivating factor for teachers. Um, you can earn stars from increasing your daily turns. So as we see classrooms go from that 15 average and climb towards 40, they're earning stars along the way. Um, we also have stars earned for getting all children up to a certain level. So really promoting that equity of interaction across the classroom and helping teachers focus most on those children who might be in language isolation or might be experiencing less turns than their peers in the same classroom. Um, on the first page of the report, it's really focused at the classroom level. Um, and we find that that hourly breakout on the right hand side really resonates with teachers because they can map on their activities from the day to that data and understand. So in this case, you see 8 a.m. has quite a few turns. That's pretty typical because that's when children arrive. If you're doing an intentional welcoming of each child into the classroom, you're gonna get that great conversation as they come in. Um, and then we, see, we also see higher turns throughout the morning hours, which is also pretty typical because children tend to be engaged in more structured activities or doing center time. And so there's intentional planned interaction through um, if they're using a curriculum in the classroom and doing effective planning. And then we do often typically see um, lower interaction in the afternoon, especially during outdoor play. And so throughout the sequence in Lena Grow, we focus on different times of day each week. And one of those is outdoor play. How do you maximize that time without giving up the freedom of children to really play and interact with each other as well? Um, and then you'll see the dip from 12 to one. I'm sure you can all guess what that is. That is nap time. Um, and so that actually can tend to help teachers really believe that the data is showing reality, right? They can see that dip and say, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's when we have nap time. Um, and so really you're focusing on those hourly increases, setting goals around specific times of day, specific outcomes you wanna see. The second page of the report um, really focuses on individual children. And this is the page that teachers um, get super excited about uh, because they are so driven to help every single child in their class and help them develop, this is the best tool um, that we can give them to help them do that. Uh, so on the left-hand side, you'll see the change over time for each child. So that's a daily graph um, of what they've been experiencing in turns each week. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see the average turns that child experienced for that day. Um, and you can see how they earn stars once all children reach five turns per hour. So in this report specifically, all of the children have reached five, which means none of them are in language isolation, which is a great achievement. Um, and they are progressing forward. So you can look at the differences between maybe Sage and Cairo and what they're experiencing in the classroom and have a really rich coaching conversation around that. I'm gonna pause here and just see if anyone has questions about the reports or how the device processes data, because I know that can elicit a lot of questions from folks. And feel free to unmute or put your questions in the chat or the Q&A. Okay, move on and feel free to continue to ask questions if you have them. The last report that we offer um, to teachers for part of this coaching sequence is the child report. Um, and this is really, if you wanna dig a lot deeper, um, into what Axel was experiencing. You'll see Axel's um, just above Sage there in the middle of the page. You can look at Axel's ex uh, specific experience at the hourly level here. So at the top, you'll see the adult words that Axel is experiencing. Um, you'll see a ton of adult words at 3 p.m. Maybe that's when pickup was occurring and there were lots of adults in the room, or maybe you were just having a really rich interaction with Axel at that time. In the middle, you'll see conversational turns. And then on the bottom, you can see child vocalizations. And the vocalizations can be a really helpful tool for teachers to understand 
when children are making those bids, those serves for the serve and return interactions, and when the optimal time is for them to engage that child. So here you'll see that Axel is vocalizing a lot at 4 p.m. And so that might be an opportunity for teachers to work one-on-one -on -one with him or you know, just make sure they're engaging with him in order to respond to those bids. And then as a result of that five week coaching um, sequence, we see significantly higher conversational turns. And that's especially true for those children who are in the lower um, taught group to begin with. So when you look at that second page of the report and you see a couple children up at the top of the list, um, those are the children who are seeing the greatest gains as a result of this program. So for children who start out in the bottom third of their classroom relative to their classmates, we're seeing a 40% increase in conversational turns. And for children experiencing fewer than that 15 turns per hour, which is the national average, we're seeing a 56% increase, which is huge. All right, now we're at the talking tips, which is um, the meat of the curriculum that teachers use to learn how to increase talk in their classroom. Um, and these are, research-based behaviors that we tried to boil down to their simplest um, ingredients to make them easy for teachers to use in any setting. Um, these are available in 12 languages, so you can access them today and uh, pass them out to any center or program that you want that you think these would help. Um, in the Lena Grow program itself, these are part of both the teacher curriculum, but they are also part of the family engagement materials that come with the program. And so these talking tips also go home. So they're being used both in the classroom setting and in the home setting. Um, and all of those family engagement materials are available in both English and Spanish. Um, and these tips on the surface, I think <laughs> to a lot of us who've been in the field for a long time seem really simple. Um, but then when you're an adult in the moment, they're actually really valuable. So I know you all noticed um, in that video that we watched of the father and the son chatting that uh, the father waiting for the child to respond was a really important element in those conversational turns. And so if you look at number seven, the tip is wait for their response. That seems really obvious and simple, but I'm the parent of a three-year-old and I really struggle <laughs> with being mindful and doing that consistently for each child. And especially when there's a lot of children around that you're trying to attend to. And so I think these are great reminders. They bring us back to the basics of how to interact effectively, regardless of what curriculum you're using um, or what you're focused on. Um, and then we're gonna take a look at some videos after this uh, and apply these talking tips. So if you can go ahead and get out your phone um, or you can click the link that we'll put in the chat um, in a second, it's not quite in there yet. Uh, you can access the talking tips. So I want you to kind of have those either up on your screen or up on your phone while we watch these videos and just make a note of which of these talking tips you see in action in a childcare setting. And being able to do this is a really good proxy for what it's like to coach with Lena Grow because you're really focusing on um, focusing in on each of these talking tips and making sure they're happening throughout every routine and activity of the day. So I'm going to pause there and just give folks time to either pull this up on their phone or um, click the link that is in the chat. And then we'll go to the video in a second. And you might have to enter your email to get them, just, just letting you know that if you hit a, a form on the web page. All right, if you can give me a thumbs up with the reactions button or just say, got it in the chat, um, I can move forward to the video. Awesome. Thanks, Christina. 
All right, I'm going to go forward and the link is still in the chat if you need to access it. So, All right, so this um, video is an infant classroom where they're doing some shared reading. Um, I think the clip will look similar. There's the same classroom as featured in the video we watched earlier. And so I want you guys to really watch out for how do they do these talking tips specifically with infants who aren't, who don't have full language yet. Cliff and his babies. Look, Envy. Look, Envy. Cliff and his baby. Cliff push his babies. Let's go, baby. Say Cliff. Look. Look, the babies. Makes me hurt you. He's cute. Look, Cliff and B. Cliff slides his babies. Wee! <laughs> Wee! Yeah, you see? Cliff feeds his babies. Milk time. Look. Yes, he's going to give the water. That's the baby. Yes, like you, and this is the other baby. The, the, the other baby. Asaya, come here, papi. Cliff tucks his babies in. Look, they put in a box, they're playing. She has some fun. <laughs> yes, there's two babies. Come. Cliff gives his baby a big hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. You know how to do a hug? Yes. Oh, you heard the you book? You heard the book? Oh, oh that's Jesus. good job. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> good job, Envy. And now, Cliff going to sleep. <laughs> good job. Look, she going to sleep with the babies and the cat. Say bye-bye to Cliff. Say bye bye to Cliff. Say bye bye, Cliff. Say bye bye, Evie. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> You're so happy. Where are you going? Yay, Evie! The end. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Do you like the book? All right. Um, I have to admit, I always choose that video because I can't resist a baby hugging a book. It's like mm -hmm. the best thing ever. Um, so go ahead and put in the chat or unmute yourself and share any of the talking tips that you saw used. And you can just put the number or you can put the number in the purple text, um, like three name things as an example. Waiting for a response. Yep, we mm -hmm. definitely saw that one. Thanks, Carla. Touch, hug, hold, yes. <laughs> Both books and humans. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Trinicia, you found a lot. <laughs> way to go. Way to go. Yep. Six is tune in and respond. So we see her responding to that child, getting really excited, getting, getting down on their level. Yep, exactly. So they're on the floor with these children engaging directly face to face. New things I encourage. Yep. Yeah. Commented on the child hugging the book. Nice. Y'all are good at this. <laughs> I think we've maybe named every single one at this point, mm -hmm. which is really impressive. Um, so yeah, each of these, uh, the idea is that you can do all of them effectively throughout the day, but for teachers, it can be less overwhelming to just focus on one or two at a time and really figuring out how to embed that throughout the day. Um, and so that's what the Lena Grow curriculum does is kind of walks them through that thinking. Oh, and number five. Yes, touch, hug, hold, for sure. And with infants, that's so important to really elicit that interaction. 
All right, we're going to move on and do one more video. Oh, <laughs> awesome. I'll take that props. Thank you, Trinitia. <laughs> All right, we're going to do um, a toddler classroom now so you can see the difference of um, what it looks like in, at that age level. And this video is um, during mealtime. So mealtime is a really important um, time of day that we find tends to have less talk than other times of day. Um, and I completely identify with that as someone who has had to serve meals to toddlers. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of logistics going on. You're trying to make sure everyone's fed and clean, everything's clean. Um, but it is a really good opportunity to have those sort of casual conversations really relate back to the child's personal experiences and experiences at home. And so we have a whole week focused specifically on increasing turns during meal times. And this is a good, the next slide. great example of that. Oh, you're right. There we go. All right, here it goes. And again, note your uh, talking tips that you see. Did you try this ham? This is really good. It's not your favorite? This is my favorite right here. Are these long green? Look, I have one too. Look. Is it green bean? It has a seed inside. Do you want to try it? Try it. Give it a bite. That's what I just ate. It's a green bean. Try it. Hey, Saxon, can you pass the rice down to me, please? You're going to get some? Can I have it after you? Thank you. What do you think? It's kind of good. It's kind of crunchy, kind of salty. You like it? I like it. Those are my, those are my favorite. Tasty? You want to be all done? Okay. Watch out for your milk. <laughs> All right, so what did you all see in that video in terms of talking tips? All right, yep, one, talking tip one, talk about what you're doing and thinking. The naming things for sure, when she was talking about the green beans and all the other foods that they were eating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Naming things. Mm -hmm. I saw a little uh, repeating and adding. So when she asked for her to pass the rice, she repeated the child's response. We couldn't hear it in the video, unfortunately, um, which thank goodness for the Lena device, which can hear what these children are saying, because in an observation, it can be hard. Um, yeah, three and one, seven, 10 and 13. So seven is waiting for their response. Yeah, you see her waiting for them to answer her. The um, encouraging, mm -hmm. you know, by trying new things. Yeah. Trying green beans. That's a big win. <laughs> awesome. All right. You guys have got this. Um, and so throughout the Lena Grow sequence, we really encourage um, supplementing with some coach observation, if at all possible, during specific times of day that you're working on um, so that you can really observe what these back and forth exchanges are looking like. All right. So we're going to wrap up this um, portion where we're kind of experiencing what the program looks like and zoom back out um, to share with you all the different ways you can bring Lena to your program. So if you want to be able to leverage this data with teachers, there's a couple of options you have. Um, so we have the Lena Grow program on the right. So that's a lot of what we've been talking about, um, which is the five-week coaching sequence. It's a full PD um, program and it has proven results um, in some uh, in a bunch of evaluations. And it's a bigger investment of time. So if you're a local partnership um, and you want to bring this to your program, you will have to make sure you have coach time committed to being able to do those five weeks of coaching. They're 30 minutes each. Um, most folks we work with don't have a challenge with that. They have more of a challenge with working with the directors at the sites and making sure that teachers have 30 minutes of coverage so they can participate in a meaningful way in that coaching program. So just considering those two factors is important um, in making sure you're ready to do Lena Grow. 
Um, and also in the Lena Grow program, because you kind of take it around to different centers and work with different teachers, you purchase and own the devices. So you then use those devices um, through different cohorts throughout the year with different teachers. And then on the left-hand side, we have a, um, an offer specific to North Carolina, which is sort of like an entry level um, to Lena Grow. So it's Lena Beginnings. Um, and this is really a way to get the data in the hands of teachers with the least amount of work on your part and on teachers' part possible. So if you're maybe not ready to take on that whole five-week sequence, but you want to see what this data can do for teachers and for center directors, this could be a really good option for you. Um, in this case, Lena lends the devices. So we ship them directly to the site along with the vests. Teachers put them on, get one day of data, send the devices directly back to our office. We process them and then send the reports directly to you, the teachers, and the center director if that's what you opt for. Um, and so this kind of takes out a lot of the logistical pieces with Lena Grow um, and gets the data directly in those teachers' hands as quickly as possible. Um, so those are kind of the two options you all have. There is um, kind of a limit on the beginnings offering. Um, so that has to be purchased by the end of August, um, and then it has to be used by the end of the calendar year. So within this fiscal year that you're looking at um, is when you would have the chance to do that. If you did the Lena Beginnings, you can always kind of transition that into Lena Grow. So if you work with those teachers, they get one day of data and they're like, I want to keep going. Um, you can absolutely uh, transition that into a full coaching sequence if you want to. And we do see that it's just one of the things we always try and articulate is just like get through that first Lena day because it may be something that's just is kind of abstract, nothing that you know, has a, a teacher um, has ever experienced before. I mean, they may be used to the coaching aspect, but once they can get through that first Lena day, their the investment and satisfaction. We also have a lot of data on educator satisfaction, teacher satisfaction, teacher self-efficacy um, around the Lena program. And, 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 you know, really that encouragement and that support from the center director um, and from the coach to kind of be able to really see the benefits of getting data in the hands of teachers, which we know doesn't, as Liz alluded to, doesn't happen very often. If it does, it's usually not very timely. And then I think the other thing to consider is um, we have had folks uh, collect some Lena data, so maybe one day of data like you're seeing on the left, um, and then use that information to decide where they want to invest coaching time. So we know coach capacity can be limited and, you know, coaching can be really expensive for you all to provide to every single teacher, every single site. And so if you can gather this data and then decide which rooms would benefit from further coaching, that's another way to approach this. So if you want to make the most of your coaching capacity over the next year or two, um, that would be a good way to collect that data and then decide which teachers and rooms might benefit from additional coaching or the full Lena Grow program. We do wanna open it up to questions. Um, I wanted to just add one more thing is we have a lot of resources at Lena. If you were choosing to um, use a potentially like find a funding opportunity to bring Lena Grow or Lena Beginnings through a grant, we have um, a lot of language that is kind of how to, how to fund your Lena program. That's really kind of, plug and play type of language. Um, we're really wanting to help help you all um, in that process um, if it is something additional to like then putting it in an operating budget. Um, so, you know, we're here to help. Um, we really um, see such, again, through the research and just through um, our own observations, the benefit of um, this in terms of overall child development and also self-care for and self-satisfaction for educators as well. So we'll pause here. Um, please feel free to use the chat again or unmute for the next four minutes. We would love to hear kind of any kind of questions or wondering or any kind of comments you have.
So my question's a little long. Is it okay if I unmute? Yes, you should be able to ask. Okay. Okay. So you can hear me. Yes. Yes. So, okay. So I'm wondering, like, in Listen, the I were just talking about healthy pauses because we know sometimes it takes a while to kind of type it in. Although it maybe, oh, maybe somebody doesn't have a question, and if not, that's fine too. Um, we are available also to answer questions or have further conversations. Um, after this yes. call. So um, I'll go ahead and put my email in the chat. Jody, can you hear me? Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Yeah, uh, I believe it was Leah speaking. I think they are unable to hear. No, we can't hear anyone. Talking. Yeah, I, th I think that's a... No. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, is it is it Leah trying to speak? Can you all hear her? Uh huh. Yeah, I'll type it in. Oh, oh now now we can, can hear you. you. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, I was wondering, like in the group interaction, like the first video with the book example, like how specific is the reading to each child? How does that how does that work? I mean, does the child have to have some sort of vocalization or response that's picked up for it to kind of register for that child? Yeah, so, um, and I think videos are so hard because the audio is not as rich as when you're in person, um, but it does, you do have to hear some kind of vocalization from the child. It can be pretty mm -hmm. quiet and pretty basic. So if we're talking infants, it could be like a, eh, or a, a coo, you know, um, mm -hmm. it can be really small and then it picks that up. And then if there's an exchange or a response from the adult, or if the adult spoke first, and then that child makes a sound in response, that would count. So in that video, there's a child in the foreground who I think is crying a little bit. And so that's mostly what we're hearing on the audio of the video, but we can guess that probably that child who was interacting directly with the book was making sounds as they interacted and it's picking those up. Um, oftentimes we do get the question about sort of body language, because that's also such an important part of communication. And the Lena device is not able to capture that, obviously. Um, so, you know, we're not saying that's not an important aspect of communication. It's just not something that's measured here. And that's really why it's important to think about this as a job embedded kind of professional development coaching model. And that when we think about the Lena um, implementation that we have the Lena day and the coaching day in the same week, because um, if you waited, then you wouldn't, you know, there's so much happens in a week, right? You wouldn't really remember kind of what that interaction is to um, think about how to kind of use your um, memory of that interaction with the, with the hardcore data report. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Well, we know we're right at 11 o'clock um, and many of you are probably jumping to the next meeting or call or have to go out um, to uh, visit a center. We really appreciate um, the time that you've spent with us. And again, feel free to send an email with any questions that you may have. Um, and we are very thankful for the time that we got to spend with you this morning. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. All right. Yes. Thank you all so much. Thank you again. Um, I appreciate all of you for attending the Smart Start Conference and I'm very thankful for Lena and for this presentation. So thank you all so much. Hope you have a great day. Thanks, so. thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.